How big is the universe? Well, we cannot know. It could be infinitely big. The only thing that we can know is how big the size of the observable universe is. This would be the distance that light could have maximally traveled since the Big Bang. Sometimes this distance is also referred to as the particle horizon. Since we know the age of the universe, which is roughly 14 billion years, we also must know how far light has traveled since then. 14 billion light years, right? So the observable universe has a radius of 14 billion light years. Easy, right? Case closed, end of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Well, there's a catch. This calculation would only be correct if we were to live in a static universe, which has been Einstein's dream. But reality hit quite different when in 1929 Edwin Hubble discovered that space is actually expanding. So while a photon has traveled 14 billion light years since the birth of the universe, the expansion of space has actually carried the photon way further in distance up to 46 billion light years according to state-of-the-art science results. So this is the actual size of the observable universe, a bubble of 46 billion light years in radius. Calculating this result is not that easy and requires numerical integration. But there is a simpler way to derive that result and I'm going to show you in this video. So let's have a closer look at the expansion of space. We have two galaxies in space. And to represent space, we will draw a grid. Both galaxies are located in intersection points of grid lines. This way we can define a distance between them. And in our case, the distance between the two galaxies is two grid points. Now let time pass and space expand. The physical distance between the galaxies has increased by some scale factor a of t, but the coordinate distance between the two galaxies remained the same, two grid points. The scale factor tells us at what rate the universe has been expanding at a given time t. So in order to understand the expansion history of our universe, we need to know how the scale factor function a of t looks like. But how can we actually know? Let us think for a moment about what could possibly influence that scale factor. The scale factor represents the expansion of space. Space leads us into the realm of general relativity, where we learned that mass and energy are curving spacetime. And since E equals mc squared, it is energy that influences spacetime. So the scale factor must somehow be influenced by the energy that the universe contains. And that is exactly what the Friedman equation is telling us. In 1922, even before Edwin Hubble observed the expansion of space, the Soviet physicist Alexander Friedman derived an equation to derive the entire expansion history of the universe. He used the Einstein field equations of general relativity as a starting point together with the so-called cosmological principle, and he figured out how the energy inside the universe influences its expansion. The Friedman equation is a first-order differential equation for the scale factor dependent on the entire energy density contained in the universe, which is represented by rho of t. And of course we have a constant factor involving the gravitational constant. Let's have a closer look at this equation, shall we? The energy density consists of radiation, matter, which includes normal baryonic matter as we know it, and dark matter dark energy and curvature energy. The curvature energy density corresponds to a universe with a global curvature. Examples would be a spherical universe or a universe shaped like a saddle, or a flat universe. And according to current research results, the universe is flat, so the curvature density can be set to zero. Then there is the radiation density, so the energy density coming from all the photons floating through the cosmos. There was a time, indeed, when this density has been really high. To be more precise, in the first 47,000 years after the Big Bang, it was radiation which dominated the universe, and its energy density was much larger than that of matter or dark energy. But then, after 47,000 years, matter took over and kept control for almost 10 billion years. After all this time, dark energy came out of the dark entered the chat and since then is in charge of the universe.
But for most of the time since the Big Bang, the dominating force was matter. Dark energy only had an influence for about 4 billion years, as compared to the 10 billion years of matter. So to simplify the Friedman equation, we will assume to live in a matter-dominated universe. And this will already get us quite close to the actual result of 46 billion light years for the size of the observable universe. So here we are with a simplified Friedman equation containing only the time-dependent matter density in our universe. So all we have to think about now is how does this matter density look like? What kind of function could it be? And all we have to do is consider the expansion of the universe again. Because if the universe is expanding, then a volume is expanding and the matter in this volume is diluting. So we can conclude that the matter density is proportional to the scale factor to the power of minus 3. So that means that we can write the matter density as some constant factor rho 0 times the scale factor to the power of minus 3 in dependency of t. So let's plug that in into the Friedman equation and we will get it. 8pg on the right side divided by 3 times rho 0 times a to the power of minus 3 dependent on t. Now we can multiply both sides of the equation with a squared and what we will get then is that a dot squared is equal to 8pg over 3 times rho 0 times a to the power of minus 1 of t. Then we can write a dot as dA over dt. And then we have that this is equal to the square root of 8pg times rho 0 over 3 times 1 over the square root of a times t. A um, dependent of t, I'm sorry. All right, since we uh, wrote a dot as dA over dt, we have a differential equation which we can solve via separation of variables. And this is what we're going to do now. We just put the square root of a to the side of the dA and the dt to the side of the constant square root term 8, P, 8 pi g over 3 times rho 0 times dt. Oh man, I have said the pi wrong a lot of times now, but just leave it. It's okay. All right, so we have square root of a times dA is equal to the square root of 8 pi g over 3 times rho 0 times dt. All right. All we have to do now is integrate on both sides of the equation. Since 8 pi g over 3 times rho 0 and the square root of that is a constant term, we can just extract that out of the integral. It's not dependent on time. And now we have to solve those two integrals. Well, the integral on the right hand side is rather easy. It's just t. The integral on the left is an elementary integral and this just gives us 2 thirds times a to the power of 3 halves. And this, this is equal to the square root term times t. And eventually this will lead us to the scale factor being proportional to t to the power of two thirds. Because two thirds is just a constant term and all we are interested is in proportionalities. This is all that we need to now calculate the size of the observable universe. The radius of the observable universe is the distance light could have traveled since the Big Bang. But how do we get that distance? When we're talking about distances, we're talking about metrics, the heart of general relativity. In the beginning we stated that the global curvature of the universe equals zero. This means we can globally apply a Minkowski metric. But we have to modify it a bit to account for the expansion of space. And this is done through a simple multiplication of the infinitesimal distance element dr squared with the squared scale factor. And this now is a simple metric describing our universe. Now from relativity, so from the theory of relativity, we also know that light, while it is traveling through space, does not experience time or space at all. So this means it does not experience any change in time and space, so no change of distance. This means that the distance, and therefore the metric for light, equals zero. And now we have an equation that we can just rearrange. So we just put the minus a squared dr squared to the other side of the equation and then we get c squared dt squared is equal to a squared dr squared. 
we can just drop the squares here and then we get CDT is equal to A times DR. All right, here we have infinitesimal elements, so all we have to do now is we integrate. And we do that, and what we get here is R0 being the coordinate distance that light has traveled in the time from 0 to T0. And T0 is the age of the universe. So here we're calculating the coordinate distance that light has traveled in the time since the Big Bang, accounting for the expansion of the universe through the A of T, through the scale factor in the integral. But we want to know the real physical distance that light has traveled. So what we have to do is we have to calculate this coordinate distance R0 with the scale factor at the time dt0, so today. And this is the physical distance. So this means that the real physical distance is c times a of t0 times the integral from 0 to t0 over dt divided by a of t. All right, so now what we do is, in order to solve the integral, we have to plug in something for a of t. And now we remember that we stated that the universe is matter dominated and therefore we know that the scale factor is proportional to t to the power of two thirds. And we just plug that in without any constants because we're just interested in estimations. So what we get then, if we also plug in a for t, t0, then we have the speed of light c times t0 to the power of t thirds, and then the integral from 0 to t0 over the integrand t to the power of minus 2 thirds. And as you can see, this integral has a quite simple solution because you only have to integrate the polynomial um, t to the power of minus 2 thirds, and then you get 3 times c times t0. So t0 is the age of the universe, so 14 billion years roughly. c is the speed of light. So c times t0 is 3 times 14 billion light years, and this is 42 billion light years. And when we remember what the state of the art actual science result for the size of the observable universe is, it was 46 billion light years. So we're only 44 billion light years away from it. You might ask yourself now, why is the universe 44, uh, 46 billion light years, so 4 billion light years larger? Well, here is dark energy coming into the game because dark energy is actually accelerating the universe expansion. So when dark energy entered the chat uh, 4 billion years ago, the expansion of the universe started to get faster and faster. And this means that also light could travel in this time a little bit further, in this case 4 billion light years further. So this is it, the size of the observable universe. Approximately 42 billion light years, only 4 billion light years away from the actual research scientific result. And I think that's absolutely amazing because we only applied simple elementary integration techniques to get a result that is top-notch scientific. And this is what I absolutely love about physics, that you can simplify those overcomplicated calculations so much that you can qualitatively tell something about what is happening in nature. So if you liked this video, if you enjoyed the ride with me, please leave a like, maybe consider to subscribe if you haven't already, that would help me a lot. I really enjoy doing this content and I would love to do that for long. So yeah, that helps me a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, see you in the next video. It was nice to have you. So bye.